the end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today we're going to show interfacing FL Digi with N1MM to be able to use digital modes during a contest where you're using N1MM Plus as your computerized logger. The use of FL Digi in N1MM is really slick and it makes it really easy to make those QSOs quickly. Uh, full ability to edit the macros and those macros are only going to be for N1MM. It's not going to affect your main FL Digi config. So if you're interested, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, make them below and don't forget to click the subscribe button. And if this uh, video helped, click like as well. Anyway, with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today we're going to take a look at installing FL Digi to work with, of course, N1MM for contesting. This is part of our field day preparation series, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our file manager, and we're going to go locate FL Digi. Now, this operates in kind of a different fashion. Under C drive, under uh, programs here, uh, x86, I'll find the latest version of FL Digi. You can see I have a couple different versions in here. And I want to just right hand mouse click the FL Digi executable and I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Now, believe it or not, we're going to go into our documents directory and then here is our N1MM logger plus setup folder that we use for our own configuration. I'm going to create a directory in here and I am going to call that directory FL Digi. I'm going to copy the FL Digi executable all by itself, just hit paste here, into this directory. Now, if you're familiar with FL Digi, you understand there's all sorts of support files and everything else. Those will all be created in this directory. You're not actually using your original FL Digi install. You're going to be actually reconfiguring FL Digi from nothing for this. Um, your original FL Digi configurations and settings will all be there when you go and launch FL Digi outside of N1MM. But for the purpose of this, we're going to be inside N1MM and only using the waterfall display from FL Digi for our digital modes. So, Let's go ahead and we'll double click on N1MM and get that launched. And I've already configured my uh, radio for cat control in N1MM. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, you probably want to look at a previous video on how to do that. Um, that previous video, we talk a little bit about the additional little screens I have up here. So it's a good video to check out before you go any farther with this. Um, we're going to go to config and we're going to con uh, go to configure ports, mode control, and win key. In here, we're going to do a couple things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to click on set and we're going to click on push to talk via radio command and push to talk via digital controls. I have seen some instances where I've actually had to do uh, a CW mode to get digital to work. I don't know why that is, but uh, uh, certainly you can check that one as well. Uh, with my Yesu, I don't need to do that. I believe it was a K3 we were having that issue with. But with that, I'm going to click OK. And what this is basically allowing is N1MM to control your push to talk on the radio. Then I'm going to go over to digital modes and I'm only going to set this up for a single radio. So under digital interface one, I'm going to say sound card. All the rest of this grays out because 
we're using AFSK with FL Digi. Now I need to make sure that down here, this is also checked as AFSK for D, uh, Digital Interface 1. Now here's the kind of tricky part. We've got uh, DI1 and DI2. We want to select the FL Digi um, portion of this. And we're going to go and identify where we have set FL Digi up right there under our document structure where we copied that and dropped it in. And we're going to say OK. Now, Mo Control is an interesting subject with radios. For my Yesu, I typically set up, uh, uh, use uh, contest or radio mode, and then what I will do is I will, uh, I use uh, AFSK-R. Uh, That's the setting that my radio understands to be data-USB or upper sideband. Uh, your radio will probably be different. Um, anyway, with that, that is actually all I really have to mess with here. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, now that we have that all set up, I'm going to go ahead and I don't have to do this, but closing and reopening the software many times, uh, you know, makes things go a little bit smoother. Uh, again, you're changing some pretty good sized configurations here. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and switch over to a digital frequency uh, that is known for PSK31. So uh, I'm on the right frequency. I'm going to verify that my power and everything is set up right and my tuner's in place and all that. You know, uh, the, the little things that make this stuff important. All right, so under Window... I'm now going to go to Digital Interface. And here comes the Digital Interface. Now, you'll see that I have uh, MMVARI coming up, which we're not going to use. And you can also see that that window is getting in my way. I'm going to move it off to the side. I have dual monitors, so this becomes a little bit easier for me. Uh, I can spread my digital mode on one monitor and my regular mode on the other monitor, and I'm in pretty good shape. So I have to change my interface right here to FL Digi. You'll notice that will close, and all of a sudden what's going to happen is the setup engine's going to come up. Very important that uh, you understand what you're doing here. I'm going to put my call sign in um, in both places. It really isn't necessary for what we're doing, but if there is a leak or something in the software for whatever reason, my call sign will be in there. I'm going to hit Next. Now I need to set my port audio, and that's going to be set to my USB codec. That's the current radio that I'm using for this. Uh, yes, all right. Then I'm going to hit Next. And the rest of this, guess what? I'm not really going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything at all. I'm just going to finish up. And we'll click back on the digital. Now, I'm also going to do something very important. I want a configuration. I'm going to tell it to save config. All right. Let's go ahead and broaden this out a little bit. There's lots of different tricks to setting this up. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you the most important. For one thing, I want to be able to hear what's going on. So I'm going to turn this up to 70. And I like to start at about minus 15 over here. Um, my zoom, I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Now we're starting to see some stuff that looks reasonable. Um, so for this particular setup, I don't necessarily need my band map. I don't necessarily need this. And I certainly, uh, this is nice to have. So I'll just stick that up there for now. It may pop up every once in a while and be annoying. Like I said, with the dual monitor, this makes things a bit easier. Some settings that I'm going to make right away, though, is I'm going to go in under Configure Dialog. And I want to go to the UI. And I want to go to General. And I want to tell it, do not confirm exit. Do not prompt to save log. 
Do not prompt to save configuration and don't prompt to save macros. Okay, I'm going to turn all that off because I don't want it interrupting me. Let's see, what else? Um, that's probably a good place to start uh, under the waterfall. I'm going to change the... I've got to find it. It's interesting. They change this all the time. And there's a particular place. I always have a heck of a time finding it. Waterfall height in pixels. I like to take mine up to about 200. All right. And then we can save that and close. Now, let me get this out of my way. I'm going to go ahead now and verify that I've saved this. And now I'm going to close. And it's confirming. And then we will reopen it. Let's see here. Digital interface. There we go. I have my bigger, uh, bigger deal here. Now, I want to shut AFC off here. I'm going to go ahead and close again. Now, this time it shouldn't ask me to close. And you can see that it didn't, it just closed. So that means our, my settings that I made earlier now are in effect. Now, let's finish setting up our window. There's some key things that I want to change for my comfort level. In setup, I'm going to uh, turn that on, which is going to transfer my actual frequency offset. And let's see, uh, looking at what else I want to turn on. And to be honest with you, I think that's it. Of course, I always forget something, and your mileage is going to vary. You're going to have to set this up in whichever way you think it should be set up. There's all sorts of little bit adjustments here and everything else. Um, let's see. Add call sign. Spend space. I'm just looking here. Uh, do not, I'm not really worried about a lot of this. There we go. If QSY, yeah. Actually, that pretty much is right. I want to change this to FL Digi always on top. I don't have a shift frequency compensation. Uh, I actually like to use a combination of all of my lookup ability in order to verify call signs. I'm going to change the default RIDI interface to FL Digi and the default PSK interface to FL Digi. Um, and uh, we'll leave the window as normal. And I want my window to scroll. If I don't set that, then it's just gonna stop scrolling and I'm, messages are gonna pop up underneath the window itself, which is very annoying. Um, let me go ahead and click Save Settings. And what's going to happen is everything's going to close and then it's going to restart. And just like that. And I tend to... Let's see. I tend to go back in here and do the final stage of this. I actually go into Settings and I go into Message Setup. And I'm going to import messages. Now, if you've never dealt with digital messages before, um, you probably are going to want to edit your digital F keys. But for now, we're not going to sweat that too much. I've just hit import, uh, waiting for something to pop up. Come on. You're not going to let me do it from here, are you? All right, let me right mouse click this and hit import. There we go. Okay, did you see what I did there? I went down to these boxes. I just right clicked one of them. It doesn't matter which one, and I hit import. Um, that looks like a little bit of a bug, and I can see if I can get that resolved with the uh, programmers. They, they are very responsive, by the way. Anyway, so I want to import 
uh, my default digital messages. Now, this exists under function key messages, and this is basically a scripting language. I'll show that to you, but let me go ahead and open this and save. Everything is going to reset again. Everything is going to launch back. Now we have all of our stuff here. Okay, these are all the F keys that you can use. The first set of F keys is the uh, run F keys, and the second set here, starting with F1 over here, is the search and pounce F keys. Interesting, too, that I've got a carrier out there. Let's see if we can decode any of it. There we go. Ah, a little conversation going on. That's pretty cool. All right, so... Um, anyway, that's basically the gist of setting it up. Um, you'll be using most likely your F keys rather than anything else. And of course, you're used to tuning if you've used FL Digi, which I'm assuming you have, and that's why you want to set this up. You'll be used to tuning up here with your mouse and being able to do adjustments with your mouse wheel and all that. That all works. Just remember to click back down in the window. And of course, you can click on a call sign right here, just click once, and it's going to go ahead and populate it right there, okay? Um, and then you can click your exchange, you're all set to go. Um, the only last thing I'm going to show you, okay, uh, F12, by the way, wipes everything. That's kind of cool. But let's go ahead and close the digital window, and I'm going to show you one more thing real quick, and that's going to be where those macro files are for your F keys. So I'm going to go to function keys and there it is. There's my digital default. What I typically do is I'll do a copy of it and I'll rename it to uh, oh, digi dash uh, this contest whatever contest I'm doing. Then I'll just right hand mouse click, I'll open with notepad, there we go. And I typically don't, I want to be asked, so I typically don't tell it to automatically open something. And here are all my macros, you can look up online as to what those macros are that are uh, in, encased in the uh, squiggly brackets. There's a whole mess of them. This is pretty close to what you're going to be putting out. You may want to take the test and change it to the contest name. Uh, but again, that is how you do that. Once you get that edited and all set to go and renamed, all you got to do at that point is go in and open the log database. Here's the contest you've already created. Go to Associated Files, and here is where you change the digital file. And this contest, open. And all I got to do at that point is, oh, I should fix this. This is a single op, low power, unlimited. Cool. We'll click OK. Now that's all in place. Now we'll go back to our digital window. And we'll right click here again, and again, we'll import, but we'll import the file that we just did. And then save. That's it, folks. That's all there is to it. You're all set now to run FL Digi. Um, you can run PSK31, you can run um, uh, RIDI, anything that is PSK31 is, or excuse me, FL Digi is capable of running, you certainly can choose it here. There's RIDI. Anyway, all right, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. Um, and uh, this is AG6AG. Thanks again. Well, there you go. That's how you do it. FL Digi fully functional inside of N1MM+. Now you can do all those great digital modes, no problem at all, and everything gets done kind of automatically, so it works out really well. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, make them in the comments down below. 
And if you like the video, go ahead and click like. Oh, and to get uh, notifications, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. You'll get notified every time we release a new video. Anyway, thanks for joining us. This is AG6AG73 to all, and I hope to hear you out on the air.